Taiwan. So today in this lesson, we are going to discuss Cambridge Book 7, Test 2. Now, as you know, Test 2 is mainly for the um, academic IRTS candidates, right? So in this one, we are going to have a look at all 40 questions. And before we begin the paper, I would like you to take one hour, time yourself, keep the timer with you, pause the video, do all 40 questions, and at the end, let's discuss the answers. So I think you would have finished the questions by now, right? Let's discuss the answers. So let's have a look at the answers now. So test two, passage one, answers. Please tick. Passage two, answers, sorry, before one was passage one, one to 13, test two. This one, passage two, questions 14 to 16. So what is inside brackets, it's not compulsory, right? So you could have intensive farming or modern intensive farming. But intensive farming must be there. So this one, you can write it in either order, consumers, farmers, or farmers and consumers, and is not compulsory, but these two words are compulsory. Either order is fine. Last one, passage three. Right? So I hope you would have finished marking your answers by now. Um, so if you've got 0 to 13, really unlikely, right? 14 to 21, 29, sorry, good. 30 to 40, well, probably likely to get the accepted score that you want. Right. Questions 1 to 4, yes, no, or not given, okay? Pagodas don't fall down. Only two Japanese pagodas have collapsed in 1400 years. Keywords only two collapsed 1400 years. In the first paragraph, the writer says, records show only two have collapsed during the past 1400 years. Very clear answer is yes. Next one. Key words here, Hanshin earthquake, 1995 destroyed Toji Temple. So in the first paragraph again, the writer states, the disastrous Hanshin earthquake in 1995 killed 6,400 people. Yet it left uh -huh, the magnificent five-story pagoda at the Toji Temple. So, it destroyed the pagoda, definitely no, it said it did not damage, so no. The other buildings near the Toji pagoda had been built in the last 30 years. Other buildings near Toji pagoda 30 years. Information about the buildings near the Toji pagoda can only be found in para 1 in which the writer reports, yet it left the magnificent five-story pagoda at Toji Temple in nearby Koito unscattered, though it leveled a number of buildings in the neighborhood. The writer only indicates that there were buildings near it, right? But 30 years, the time frame, we don't know. So I would say not given. We don't know the time frame. Right. The builders of pagodas knew how to absorb some of the power produced by severe weather conditions, right? Builders of pagodas knew to absorb power weather conditions. So in paragraph 4, the writer states, When the pagoda reached Japan, however, its architecture was freely adapted to local conditions. They were built less high, mainly of wood, 
because of the typhoons that batter Japan in the summer. Japanese builders learned to extend the eaves of the building further beyond the walls. This prevents rainwater gushing down the walls. So the builders of pagodas knew how to absorb some of the power produced by severe weather conditions. Yes, they did. They did some architectural changes. So yes is the answer. Question number 5 to 10. Classify the following as typical of both Chinese and Japanese pagodas. C, sorry, A, that was both Chinese and Japanese. B, only Chinese. C, only Japanese, right? Information about Japanese pagodas are mainly found in paragraph 4, right? Okay. Easy interior access to top. In paragraph 4, the writer says, the Chinese built, aha, it's about the Chinese, built their pagodas in brick or stone with inner staircases. When the pagoda reached Japan, it was made out of wood and the staircase was dispensed because the Japanese pagoda did not have any particular use but became more of an art object. So this indicates that only Chinese pagodas have staircases, right? So answer is what? Only the Chinese pagodas. Uh, easy interior access to the top. So only the Chinese one had the staircase. The so Japanese ones really didn't have a need. It was only like an architectural object. So tiles on eaves right now i want to show you what eaves is right or what they are actually right so let me show you eaves um e -B -S, right so that we're just going to search it so you can see here right the part of a roof that meets or overhangs the walls of a building so let's have a look at some images right so you can see eaves where it's a bit extended okay it hangs out okay right so with that i think you have an understanding as to what it means right now in the last sentence of paragraph five the writer says for the same reason the builders of japanese pagodas seem to have further increased their weight by choosing to cover these extended eaves not with porcelain tiles of many Chinese pagodas but with much heavier earthenware tiles, okay? So although they have different types of tiles, both Chinese and Japanese pagoda tiles have tiles or have tiles on eaves. So yes, it does both so the answer is A. Right, seven. Use as observation post. In paragraph four, the writer states, look at paragraph four. Now when I say paragraph four, don't look at the screen and wait. Go to your reading passage, go to paragraph four and run through this when I'm reading it out, right? The Chinese built their pagodas, and it goes on, and used them in later centuries as watchtowers. On the other hand, as mentioned above, we see that the Japanese pagoda served only as an art object. Can you remember? So only the Chinese um, ones. Can you see? Only the Chinese pagoda, so it's going to be B. Next one. Size of eaves up to the half a width of the building. So it said this, para 5. The writer says, the roof of a Japanese temple building can be made to overhang the sides of the structure by 50% more, right? So therefore, as half of the width, yes, but that is only the Chinese ones. We don't know much about the, sorry, only the Japanese ones. Um, we don't know about the Chinese, so only Japanese. Original religious purpose. Let's have a look at para 4. The writer says, 
the multiple story pagoda came to Japan from China in the 6th century. As in China, they were first introduced with Buddhism and were attached to important temples. This means that multi-story pagodas accompanied the spread of Buddhism from China to Japan and were attached to existing important temples. Thus, the pagodas in Japan and China were built with a religious purpose associated with Buddhism. So, original religious purpose, yes, both of them were built um, in terms of a link with Buddhism. So, it came to Japan from China. Okay, around the 6th century. 10. Flows fitting loosely over each other. Move into para 7. The writer says about Japanese pagodas, what those early craftsmen had found by trial and error was that under pressure, a pagoda's loose tack of flows could be made to slither and fro, right, uh, to and fro. This means that only Japanese pagodas can we find flows not actually connected but placed on top of each other like a snacked one, okay? So it's only the Japanese one, which is C. Okay, in a Japanese pagoda, the Shinbashira, Japanese Shinbashira. In the sixth paragraph, the writer says, is the answer that like a tall pine tree with the Japanese pagoda with its massive trunk-like central pillar known as Shinbashira, simply flexes and sways during a typhoon or an earthquake. But the answer is not so simple because the startling thing is that the Shinbashira actually carries no load at all. So it can be concluded that A and B are not correct. Okay, so there you go. Um, it, so basically A and B are not correct. Okay, so the writer continues, in fact some pagoda designs, it does not even rest on the ground but is suspended from the top of the pagoda. This means it will not connect the floor with the foundations as it does not even rest on the ground, okay? So the answer is stop the floors moving too far, answer is D. So here, Shuzo Ijida performs experiments in order to, Shuzo Ijida, experiments for what reason? Move to para 7. The writer indicates Mr. Ishida, known to his students as Professor Pagoda, because of his passion to understand the pagoda, has built a series of models and tested them on a shake table in his laboratory. So the purpose of the experiment is to understand the pagoda. The possible answers are C, obviously, right, and D. Okay. However, in the following sentences, the writer also says, the ancient craftsmen apparently without the assistance of very advanced mathematics. So this means there was no ancient mathematics. So D is incorrect. Therefore, the answer is C. Right, question number 13. The stories of a Japanese pagoda are stories Japanese. So from question 10, we can easily find that the answer is C, fitted loosely on the top of each other, okay? There's no other answer to check for sure because you know it, you've already done it. Right, um, so let's move on to the next question, right? So here it's all there for you, right, um, as to the answer because I just selected answer uh, See for you there, right? So you can go through it slowly. So definitely answer is C. So um, moving on into para 2, 
okay i didn't explain it to you because it was quite straightforward right so you can go through it and see why a b and um, d is not correct because it was a straightforward answer passage to the true cost of food so questions 14 to 17 which paragraph contains the following information a cost involved in purifying domestic water cost oops, let me just get the pen cost purifying water skimming through the passage it can be seen that information relating to the cost is mainly in para e we don't need to know the meaning of bug okay when the writer says removal of something from drinking water we can think that okay we can rely on drinking water to guess that we need to remove something unhealthy so that the water can be drinkable and this process of removal is called purifying. In para E, the writer says the costs include 23 million pounds for the removal of the bug Cryptosporidium for drinking water by water company. So it was, I mean, even if you don't understand what it is, you remove something unhealthy from the water to make it more uh, healthy or drinkable right a bug a common name used to refer to bacteria parasites or virus purify removal of these parasites or bugs to make it drinkable and clean so the answer should be e para e because we're looking at the cost involved so cost here you can see 23 million the stages in development of the farming industry stages farming now the word stages can be related to the process of the development of the farming industry skim 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 through the passage right it can be noticed that para b um, lie a number of words indicating the process okay even if you want you can scan okay look for the specific word first then then and now so particularly the writer says first mechanization right then mass use of chemical fertilizer and pesticides and then i'm sorry and now genetic engineering the onward march of intensive farming has seemed unstoppable in the last okay so it should be para b talking about the stages okay right the term used to describe hidden costs, term hidden cost, if you go to para C, in para C, the writer explains that is mainly because the costs of all this damage are what economists refer to as externalities. Okay, they are outside the main transaction. To many, the costs are not, costs may not even appear to be financial at all right so the costs that are outside the main transaction can be understood as hidden costs right so it is explained in para c 17 one effect on chemicals on water sources effect chemicals water information relating to effect is mainly found in para b so in paragraph b the writer says natural soil fertility is dropping while the growth of algae is increasing in lakes because of the fertilizer runoff okay so it is there in answer or rather para b right 18 several species of wildlife in the british countryside are declining so species of wildlife british countryside declining in para b the writer says in britain for example many of our best loved farmland birds such as the skylark the gray patridge and the lapwing and the corn bunting have vanished from huge stretches countryside as have like the insects in the text the writer says many birds have vanished 
So we can infer that the numbers are declining. So answer is yes. Okay, it's like a synonym. The taste of food has deteriorated in recent years. Taste deteriorated recent years. A reference to the cost of food in recent years can be found in para A. But no sentence includes that the quality of food, especially the taste, has deteriorated. So we don't know answer is not given. Next one. The financial costs of environmental damage are widely recognized. Financial costs, environmental, widely. So in para C, the writer says, to many, the costs may not even appear to be financial at all, but merely aesthetic, a terrible shame, but nothing to do with money. The cost here is the cost of environmental damage as listed in para B. In para C, the writer explains that it's mainly because the cost of all this damage and it goes on, it can be inferred that many people fail to make a connection between the environmental damage in turning the British countryside into a battlefield with the price that they pay for food as consumers. Therefore, financial costs are widely not recognized. So the financial cost of environmental damage are widely not recognized. So it says, um, costs of environment damage are widely recognized, but here it says they are not widely recognized if you understand this, right? So therefore, I would say the answer is no, right? 21. One of the costs calculated by Professor Pretty was illness caused by food. Costs, Professor Pretty, illness caused by food. So in para E, on listing the costs according to Professor Pretty, the writer mentions 169 million pounds from food poisoning. Thus, because the use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides and the introduction of monocultures has resulted in the production of food which is harmful to human health. So yes, one of the costs calculated by Professor Pretty was illness caused by food. Definitely yes, so the answer is yes. Question number 22 to 26. Complete the summary. Professor Pretty concluded that R, okay, are higher than most people realize because we make three different types of payment. Okay, so R means a pay, Professor Pretty, higher, three different types of payment. Now, from the keywords, especially the words three types of payment, we can skim through and infer that the content of the sentence is from para E, where the writer says, Professor Pretty draws a simple but memorable conclusion from all this. Our food bills are actually threefold. We are paying for our supposedly cheaper food in three separate ways. Once over the counter, secondly through our taxes and thirdly to clean up the mess that modern farming leaves behind. Okay? So, answer should be what? Concludes that our food bills are higher than most people realize because we paid over the counter. Okay? So here he says our food bills are actually threefold. So it's higher than we actually think because we paid for it three times. We paid over the counter, then we paid through our taxes, and then we paid to clean up the mess that we have created. Okay? So moving on to question 23. So here the answer is definitely food bills. He feels it is realistic to suggest that Britain should reduce its reliance on what? Okay, so realistic 
Britain reduce reliance on. In paragraph F, the writer argues breaking away from industrial agriculture as a solution to hunger may be very hard for some countries. But in Britain, where the in immediate need to supply food is less urgent, the costs and the damage of intensive farming have clearly been seen. It may be more feasible. This means that Pretty feels that breaking away from industrial agriculture is realistic as the need for food in Britain is less urgent, while the damage of intensive farming is more obvious. So, by looking at it, right, what comes here? Um, reduce the reliance on, you could use industrial agriculture or intensive farming. Either words are fine. So let's have a look at questions 24 and 25. Although most farmers would be unable to adapt to whatever, what's that word there? Professor Pretty wants the government to initiate change by establishing what he refers to as a what, right? So farmers, so the key words are farmers, unable to adapt to, government, change, he refers to as, goes on, right? So this is a suggestion of Professor Pretty. So we can guess that the information we need to find is from the next para. Specifically in paragraph G, the writer states, Professor Pretty feels, it's not 100%, kind of like what he feels, that organic farming would be too big a jump in thinking and in practices for many farmers, right? So this means he thinks that farmers will find it difficult to jump from what they're doing now to organic farming. So um, he feels that it would be unable to adapt to organic farming. Right? Um, and then the next one, he goes on, we find the suggestion of Professor Pretty. He is recommending the immediate introduction of a greener food standard, which would push the market towards more sustainable environmental practice, right? So what does he say? He refers to as a greener food standard. Okay, so greener food standard. He feels, it should be an S there, right? This would help to change the attitudes of both two um, groups of people, right? You change the attitude of someone. So who is that or which groups of people, right? So keywords change attitudes both. In the next sentences in para G, the writer says, it could go a long way, he says, to shifting consumers as well as farmers towards more sustainable system of agriculture. To change the attitudes, that means to shift them. Who? The farmers and consumers. There you go, your answers. So reading isn't that difficult. What is difficult? Finding where the answer is. When you do that, you've got your answer right away there. So skimming and scanning are the two techniques. Finally, we're coming into passage three, right? Um, all right, so moving on, passage three. Make it integrated rural transport project, right? So 27 to 30, choose the correct heading, right? So 27, section B. This section consists of two small paras. In the first sentence of para one, the writer states, when the project began, make it district was virtually totally isolated during the rainy season. Then he lists several problems. In the first sentence in para two, he says, before solutions could be proposed, the problems had to be understood. So we can infer from this section, the writer is going to deal with findings, what is the problem with transport. Therefore, the most suitable heading should be identifying the main transport problem.
problems because he knew that there were problems but the whole idea was to identify what these problems were before solutions could be implemented, right? So answer is two. Section C. In the first sentence of this section, the writer says, having determined the main transport need, possible solutions were identified which might reduce time and burden. So we could guess that this section is about solutions. Then in the following sentences, he goes into more detail about the solutions. During phase two, from January to February 1991, a number of approaches were implemented in an effort to improve mobility and access to transport. In paragraph four, section C, the writer refers to various means of transport and plan to use more donkeys and locally made wheelbarrows. Looking at the heading list, it can be seen that heading five contains words like improvement, mobility, transport, right? And the content matches that section as well. So we would go with five initially improvements in mobility and transport modes. 29, section E. In the first sentence of the section, the writer argues it would have been easy to criticize the MIRTP for using in the early phases a top-down approach, but it was necessary to start the process from level of the governmental authorities of the district. Here we have quite a long sentence and it is better to focus on the main clause. The author indicates that the process needs governmental authorities of the district to be involved from the beginning. So looking back at the heading list, the most possible answers that contain keywords are 4 and 10, government authorities, instructions, cooperation of district officials, right? So however, heading 4 in deals with instructions while the author mentions nothing related to instructions. Okay, but they don't say do this, do that, do this. So I would say sit down or you could say, example, um, instructions, boil water, pour it into a bowl, mix it together, right? So here we don't have such a set of words or instructions. So I would go with 10 as the answer. Corporation of district officials. Oops, so 10 is the answer, right? Okay, so moving on, 30, which is section F, right? This section consists of two small paras. In the first paragraph, we can infer that it deals with the success of MIRTP through the keywords, result of dedicated work. Then in the second para, the writer says the experiences from Makit will help this initiative and Makit District will act as a reference for future work. Okay. So it can be concluded that the writer implies that due to its success, MIRTP could be a model for future work. The most suitable heading should be one MIRTP as a future model. We'll act as a reference for future works. It's like a future model. 31 to 35, yes, no, not given. MIRTP was divided into five phases. MIRTP, five phases. So skimming through, you can use skimming and scanning together, right? Even though I just say skimming, use them together, right? When you use skimming and scanning together, it can be seen that there are only Three phases mentioned when talking about the MIRTP. Phase one is mentioned in section B. Phase two is mentioned in section C and D. Phase three is referred to in section D again. So the answer is definitely no. It says five phases, but here there's only three phases, right? 32. 
Prior to the start of MIRTP, the Market District was almost inaccessible during the rainy season, right? So prior to Makit, inaccessible rainy season. In the first sentence of section B, the writer says, when the project began, Makit district was virtually totally isolated during the rainy season. The regional road was in such bad shape that access to the main towns was almost impossible for about three months, okay? So prior to the start of this Makit district, almost it was inaccessible during the rainy season, yes. Was in such a bad shape that it was almost impossible to get there. So answer is yes. 33, phase one of MIRTP consisted of a survey of household expenditure on transport. So keywords are phase one, survey, household expenditure, transport. From the keyword phase one, we can easily identify that the information needs to be found in para two of section B, where the writer says, the socioeconomic survey of more than 400 households in the district indicated that the household in Makit spent on average seven hours a day on transporting themselves and their goods. A figure seemed Africa. So it goes on, right? Um, so this means that the survey is on the daily hours spent on transport by each household. The survey, therefore, was a survey of time expended, seven hours per day, and not of money spent by each household. So here it says, phase one MIRTP consisted of a survey of household? No, not per household, okay? So, um, of a house, survey of household expenditure on transport, right? So there was a survey time expended of seven hours, not of the money that they spent on each one, but rather the time. So it's definitely no. The survey concluded that one fifth of 20% of the household transport requirement as outside the local area, right? So keywords are 20%, transport requirement, outside, and then local, right? So in paragraph two, section B, the writer says, interesting facts regarding transport were found. 95% was on foot, 80% was within locality, 80% was, oh, sorry. So there's a duplication there, just let me cut that out, okay? 80% was within um, the locality, which means the other 20% was out of the local area. In other words, 20% of the transport was outside the local area. So they say the survey concluded one-fifth or 20% of the household transport was outside the local area. Yes, it is true. That's what it says. So the answer is yes. So moving on to the next question. MIRT hoped to improve the movement of goods from the specific district to the country's capital. What are the keywords? MIRTP, improve movement of goods, capital. In section C, the right argues, however, the difference from the conventional approach was that this time consideration was given to local transport needs outside the road of network. This means that the aim of MIRTP is to make transport of goods safer and less um, arduous by improving the parts. Or in other words, improve the movement of goods, their import and export from this specific district. But the author does not mention where the goods will be transported. He says, yes, it needs to be transported, but where to? Okay, we don't know. So therefore, answer is 
not given. Right? 36 to 39. Complete each sentence with the correct ending. Okay? So, keywords, footbridges, steps and handrails. Right? In section C, the writer says... Now, what should you come up with? The ending, right? Construction of footbridges, steps and handrails and you should give the ending, right? So, in section C, the writer says, most goods were transported along the paths that provide shortcuts up and down the hillsides. But the paths were a real safety risk and made the journey on foot even more us. It made sense to improve the paths by building steps, handrails and footbridges. Mm -hmm. So what can you see? On the other hand, when you skim through it, you can see improved paths used for transport and downhill sides consist of the words above, paths, handrails and footbridges, right? So, answer would be D, improved paths used for transport up and down hillside. Improve the paths by building steps, handrails and footbridges. Right, moving on into question 37, frequent breakdown of buses and trucks in Makati. So, breakdown buses, trucks. In section D, the writer argues, the efforts to improve the efficiency of the existing transport services were not very successful because most of the motorized vehicles in the district broke down and there were no resources to repair them. So what can we think? It can be inferred that the clause after because correspondence to the given content. We need to find the content which matches one in the other clause of this text. So when you skim read through the list, it can be seen that, so it can be seen that, you know, in I, right, where the hindered attempts to make the existing transport services uh, more efficient matches. So I, hindered attempts. So I would say match is I. 38, the improvement of secondary roads and paths. Improvement secondary road paths. Section D, the writer says, paths and secondary roads were improvedly at the request of the communities who were willing to participate in construction and maintenance, right? It was only done at the request of people. Who, which people? The local people who were willing to lend a hand. There we go. Quite straightforward. Your answer lies there. 39. The isolation of Makiti for part of the year. Right. Isolation part of the year. The word isolation leads us to look at which section? Section B. Where the writer explains, when the project began, Makiti district was virtually or totally isolated. During the rainy season, the regional road was in such a bad shape, right, um, that access to the main towns was impossible for about three months of the year. Okay, so which means E, no longer a problem once the roads had been improved. So after that, they improved it, right? So then they could use it better. So I would say answer is E. Question 40. Which of the following phrases best describes the main aim of reading passage 3? Okay. So reading through the passage and from the above answers, quick skim read, right? We can see that the passage deals with the whole process of MIRTP from how it was implemented and executed to the final positive result which was explained in section E and F. So I would say the best answer is B, okay? And there you go. Right, so it also gives you a bit of description as to why because it talks about donkeys and then, you know, 
why the other answers are not correct. So I would say B to describe how MIRTP was implemented and how successful it was. Right, that was quite a lengthy lesson, okay? So we were having a look at the test two answers and we had a look at why these answers were wrong and why are these specific answers correct, okay?